Hello ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you to compliment supplies from Biodevice Med. And thanks for taking your time. Hope you enjoyed your day already. And now our lecture is about MRI visible guide wires and steerable catheters, integrated interventional imaging operating system. By Imsat Professor Dr. Melson. Please welcome Professor Dr. Melson. Thank you very much. Um, thanks for coming for this lecture. Um, we have tried to develop something which doesn't look very exciting. It's just a little piece of wire, one would think, but it's a class 3 product. And for those of you who are aware of the problems in developing these things, may know that's uh, not an easy task. We started the Interventure MRI program about 15, 20 years ago in an open, low-field configuration and developed with Olympus MR-compatible endoscopes. The first plasma monitors became available at that time, but it was just too complicated to make technologies new and also the space in such a scanner is quite very limited. It went on um, to other applications this is neurosurgery in an open MRI configuration, which was introduced more or less at the same time by General Electric. So it was called the double donut, where the surgeon could stand in between the magnet rings and directly operate in the center. So we again tried to do endoscopic procedures, interventional procedures, reasonably successful, however, um, the technology did not fly at that time. One of the main reasons was that these imaging systems at that low field are not as a quality we had already at that time with high fields. High field means one Tesla, 1.5 Tesla, and today is three Tesla. And these magnets provide an extraordinary better spatial resolution and temporal resolution. And what is more important than time during interventional procedures either under general anesthesia or with a wake-up patient. So that was one of the very critical elements. With the advent of large bore magnets facilitating access, this is one of the first Siemens systems with 70 centimeter bore and only 125 centimeter length. We had a new option of access. So we started basically again. And at that time we thought cardiovascular already one of the most interesting applications for MR due to the very rapid breakthrough of MR angiography. Today you likely will not get a standard X-ray MR angiogram, you will get an MR um, X-ray angiogram, you will get an MRI angiogram. So we started developing procedures for um, heart valve implantation and you see here is it possible to reduce the light a bit here? I don't know whether you can see this well with my x-ray images so what you see is you see something you see the heart, the heart muscle um, the blood flow also the device um, which renders MRI as significantly superior to x-ray however one of the key problems is the strong magnetic fields which precludes all ferromagnetic materials very popular in surgery and in interventional radiology and also the strong RF field, radio frequency field uh, compromises the use of electrically conductive devices. At the same time I was offered to build up an institute for medical science and technology in Scotland, in Dundee, actually quite an interesting place with a lot of significant discoveries and pioneers in medicine. Um, and I built up an imaging interventional team um, around medical device development for procedures, particularly in view of future MRI guidance. The clinical center includes a kind of unique setting of a 3 Tesla MRI, a PET CT, and an interventional room in between, allowing the transfer of patients from one room to the other. 
either for diagnostic procedures but also for intervention procedures. It's a relatively unique setting. There are only a few other sites worldwide having such a setup. And the idea is to develop appropriate imaging um, in relation to the needs, whether it's MRI, PET, PET CT, conventional X ray, ultrasound. And for this reason, our uh, large EU network was formed on the integration of interventional imaging into the operating system of the future. But the key driver, so the key platform is MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, for these procedures. Therefore, we, we were able to build up uh, another research center with a 1.5 Tesla MRI, a surgical suite <coughs> with a C arm fluoroscopy, and all the laboratories are adjacent for ultrasound devices, for photonics, laser development, for surgical instruments, um, and for nanobiology cell cultures um, to do preclinical testing. So all basically under one roof. Kind of being the first part of the pipeline of translation from bench to bedside. GE kind of joined this effort GE identified about the same time that they should move up the MRI platform to an interventional image-guided platform and quite successfully marketing setups of biopsy oncology, radiation oncology and non-radiation focused ultrasound. One of their quite successful developments we have installed in our lab is a surgical suite with a standard marquee um, operating table whereby the patient can be transferred on the MRI trolley and then into the magnet for scanning and the um, pathology can be assessed. This is um, the most successful application um, in MR guidance. Neurosurgery, as you see here, the patient has a specific head holder and at the early days, when the first patients have been operated in an MRI scanner, it became very quickly apparent that it's a, kind of a great support for the neurosurgeon to see on MRI images immediately taken within the surgery procedure, whether there is two more tissue left or whether the patient suffers from an occult bleeding. So, as I said, most successful though the most challenging application with approximately 500 centers worldwide and 6,000 patients operated with um, intraoperative MRI and neurosurgery and this has led to a reduction of the complication rate down to 10%, not by 10%, down to 10%. And this is obviously extremely valuable and seems to be worthwhile all the effort and the investment in such an intraoperative MRI setting. And as I said, we develop mainly cardiovascular procedures. In our setting, we have a C arm combined to the OR table. And we have developed also, which I think is essential, a training program in our network. It's not simply taking that guide wire and dumping it onto a uh, intervention radiologist desks that he will go quickly to the MR and treat his patients. Absolutely not the case. He's used to um, work on a C-arm x-ray machine and everything has to be translated step by step into an MRI guided procedure. An MRI is much more difficult to operate compared to an x-ray. So in our training program, which we run in uh, in annual courses with our partner in Israel we revamped the interventional MRI program. You see the large core magnet allowing significantly improved access. This is now the GE product and in this model with a kidney reperfused um, we train together drainage, biopsy um, and two more ablation procedures um, and this was successful, so it's now translated into the first four patients performed for biopsy guidance. And I would like to draw your attention to the time. You will find in the literature that MR interventions may take one hour or two hours. This is certainly true. It's a team is not well trained and the setup is not optimized. And even 
in our setting, we were 35, 31, 26, and 20 minutes. And 20 minutes is a highly competitive time, which you basically need also in a CT-guided procedure. So in healthcare, we always face this problem, even though our technique is new um, and more challenging, but may have benefits. The buy-in of the healthcare providers particularly um, depends on the aspect that we are better and faster than anything else. Even though better may be important, faster is important. It's all about money. So one of the other important developments is the communication from inside the MRI to the outside. And there is quite a huge effort spent and an in-room monitor, just the TV, as you saw in my very early work slide, uh, is about $100,000. So we thought there must be something better, and we found the Apple platform incredibly useful, so my thanks goes to Steve Jobs that he made not just a great product line, he made it MRI compatible. So iPad, iPhone, iPod, Magic Trackpad, you can basically use all of them in the scanner and you never have broken one. And it's being used inside here the room. We can control, remotely control the MRI scanner via a VPN network, so kind of remote control. And this is so important because then the interventionist is enabled to position slice accordingly to communicate. Um, we can, for example, have a Bluetooth communication inside the room. Um, and these are investments of, let's say, below 5,000 pounds. It's certainly not a medical product. And still a question whether this ought to be a medical product. And it's at the discretion of the hospital to use any kind of communication devices inside uh, their um, environments. So there's a bit of a discussion here about the regulatory hurdle. Nonetheless, these products are available and uh, the regulatory pathway um, is basically paved. So we had solved this and now we have set up a program with our intervention radiologist. So we're allowing them a standard vascular access in the femoral artery. So those are the different access points we have in vascular interventions. Um, and <clears throat> they basically do a conventional x-ray guided procedure in the one side of the room and then we transfer the model to the other side and they perform the MR guided procedure. And we have a very, very steep learning curve. One of the benefits in using MR is we avoid the radiation, ionizing radiation derived by those um, cath lab angio setups. And one other argument was always, oh, MRI is so expensive. Much more expensive than X-ray. Well, it may be true if it's a simple X-ray machine, but such a cath lab setup is more expensive than an MRI and requires um, quite significant maintenance and is costly to run. So this argument is not quite true. True is, however, that in a cath lab, interventions are scheduled, the logistics, the environment of the hospital, is organized around this, whereas it's not the case for MR interventions. So this is one of the crucial hurdles, which we hope to break through now with a CE marked device, a guide wire, where the interventionists can start their procedures.